Well, when we talk about modeling, Minitab has a suite of predictive analytics tools. And to be clear, this is an add-on. So if you have regular old Minitab, which is awesome, has a lot of great tools, including cart regression, which is part of regular Minitab, but we now have this suite of more advanced, uh, more precise modeling tools. And, you know, we used to use kind of the standard has been multiple regression, uh, linear regression. That's still a great tool that's been available in the regular Minitab men menus for many, many years. But in addition to that, we have these tree-based methods. We have random forests, we have tree net, and we have CART. And those are decision tree type models that can be very effective at determining which inputs have effect on our outputs. But within the last couple of months, we've added this really great new tool called MARS. Uh, it's multivariate adaptive regression splines. And this is what we're gonna use today for our example. So let's think about how people might go about trying to tune in a process. Well, the first thing they might try is, you know, a lot of people have learned linear regression in school. Uh, it's something that's been ubiquitous out there. So they might try that. Well, there's some issues with linear regression that we have to be aware of. And the first issue is what if I have missing values in my data? If I look up top here, I have 1408 in my rows, but there's 299 that have all the data. And what we're talking about, especially early production, you know, it's kind of chaotic in some cases. And in my experience, there's uh, maybe some automated data collection that something doesn't work as we thought would work. So we miss some data values. Maybe people forget to write things down. Uh, there's various reasons, but I've seen a lot of missing data in early production data. So that's gonna happen, it's a reality. And when you're using linear regression, it's only gonna use those rows that have all the data unless you do something like imputation and that gets a little weird. The other thing is linear models are highly dependent upon this assumption of normality, uh, that kind of Gaussian bell-shaped curve. And when I look at the probability plots and we expect our data to follow along this red line here, but I can see that my low and the high values don't behave well, whether I'm using my training data or my test data. So I already know I'm gonna have errors when I try to use a linear model because it just doesn't fit. I'm using a screwdriver to pound a nail. Well, what if I have nonlinear influence trends? Um, this is actually more common than people think, uh, especially if you have chemical processes, which plastics can be. Um, not all uh, patterns are a straight line. And I can definitely see that in my scatter plots. I've got that curvature. I even have some issues with more variance and higher values than I have in low variance. And those are typical problems for linear regression. It's gonna create a lot of error in your predictions. And then what if significant interactions are present? I only have so many degrees of freedom in this model. So if I wanna throw a bunch of interactions, I better be collecting a lot more data and that can be an issue for early production. Well, the next step you might try is tree-based models, right? We have cart, we have random forests, we have uh, tree net. The pros of those models, there's no distribution-based assumptions. So it doesn't matter what shape your data is, it's gonna work. Also, even if you have some cells missing, it's going to use all your rows to create your model. So, you know, you're not gonna be missing some maybe important information in some of those rows that have some missing values. It's gonna utilize everything. And these models handle interactions well. If there's interactions embedded in your, uh, among your inputs, it's adjusted and it's handled quite well. Well, there's limitations as well. There's no coefficients available to quantify the influence of factors. So I can tell which factors tend to split my average results, but it's hard to tell other than looking at how many splits that a factor is responsible for. I don't have an equation to really quantify that influence. These tools don't necessarily capture nonlinear trends. Uh, 
So that's another issue. And there's some limited capacity to include all available predictors. So, you know, a little bit of limitation there. Well, now we have Mars. This is what we're going to really be utilizing today. The great thing about Mars, it's an algorithm that identifies complex behavior of inputs. And we can see in this example, um, it really is kind of a collection of many functions that are linear in nature, these little you know, lines, but it fits a complex shape very well. So that machine learning that's utilized with Mars identifies the optimum number of base functions. So these many functions that get totaled together to make the Mars. Interactions are captured, and I can even get quantification of those interactions with coefficients. There's great predictive power, and I have this coefficient-based model, so I can have an idea of how much influence each base function has on the total. And there's no distribution-based assumptions, and I can have some missing data out there. So uh, these have really a lot of advantages over linear regression, and they have advantages over tree models for the purposes we're going to be using today.